Now we are onto the very last capital budgeting method, and it's called the payback rule. This rule is very different than the other methods that we look at, because the other methods are looking at do we increase the value of a firm. The payback rule asks a very different question. It asks how long does it take for a project to pay back its original investment. So it's fundamentally different from any of the other methods that we have we have seen before. Um, and it also posed some interesting question. What is the minimum acceptance criteria? How fast is fast enough? And the answer is it, det it, determines by, it is determined by management. There's no economic justification behind, well, you have to make your money back in two years or in three years or in five years. Um, in terms of rank ranking for mutually exclusive projects, you would give preference to the project that pays back first. Um, so before we go into how to compute the payback method, let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of this method. The advantage and the biggest advantage of this project is that it is easy to understand. And it does provide some bias towards liquidity, which in some way is giving you a little bit more uncertainty. However, um, or take into account uncertainty, uncertainty of the future. But its method of treating uncertainty is very crude. It ignores future cash flow altogether. Um, however, because it is very easy to understand, and if you try to convince someone to invest in um, a project, you will say, you can get your money back in six months. That's a very, very strong um, argument. However, for large scale important projects, um, that may be less important. The reason why we emphasize the advantages and disadvantages of funding is because the payback method have a lot of disadvantages. Um, it ignores the time value of money and it requires an arbitrary acceptance criteria. And then once your project is paid back, you ignore all the future cash flow. So it has a strong bias against long-term projects. So, um, and of course, it's not applicable to unconventional cash flow. So that, that is one of the, um, that obviously is true. And then the most important reason why the payback period method is um, not optimal is because that some project may be acceptable under the payback rule, but may actually have negative net present value. And that will be a, that would be a um, value decreasing or a value reducing project. So you don't want to accept short, you don't want a firm to be too myopic, too short term, and you don't want it to accidentally accept projects that actually reduce its value. So that's why the payback method is used a lot in, in, in practice, but it's never used by itself. So the best way to use the payback method is as a check. Does the project generate positive net present value? And what is its payback? So instead of having a, a hard cut off and say, we won't accept any project unless it pay back less than two years or three years, is to ask, so how long does it take for this project to pay back? That is, not, that is a very useful question to ask, but to set that as the hard acceptance or rejection criteria uh, is not a good management approach. So now let's take a look at how do we compute payback. So we'll use the same cash flow throughout this, this, um, this chapter. So to compute the payback method, we have to look at when do we get back the $165,000. So one way to do that is to compute the cumulative cash flow. So the cumulative cash flow is just adding the cash flow each year. So in the first year, we're out $165,000. In the next year, we're going to add the $63,120 back. So after we add the $163,125 back, we will get, uh, we are now only out $101,880. Next year, we get another $70,800 back. So we add that to our cash flow. So We'll still, we still don't have all our money back yet. We are still out $31,080. In year three, the last year, we got $91,080. If we add that back, 
will be up six sixty thousand dollars so we know that the payback occurs somewhere in here right between year two and year three so we know it, it takes at least two years so the payback period it takes at least two years so you can say it takes two plus years for this project to pay back now you can get a little bit more precise um, if you assume that cash flow occur evenly throughout the time period you can figure out how much into year three before you get your money back so to get that last part, how much into year three, we take the ratio. We take how much we still have outstanding. We still have $31,080 outstanding at the end of year two versus how much we expect to get back in year three. So we expect to get back $91,080 in year three. So how much we still have outstanding divided by how much we expect to get back. Uh, that turns out to be about 2.34 years. So to me, the most important part about payback is that it takes two plus years for this project to pay back. Should we accept or reject this project? Um, that really depends on management and how management feel um, based on the payback period. Based on net present value rule, this is a value, valuable project. It has a positive net present value. It pays itself back in 2.34 years. It generates an internal rate of return of 16%. So all those are information that you can use to support this project. And, and here we conclude the chapter this chapter on capital budgeting. So now you have all the methods that you need. You have the net present value method, the profitability index rule, the internal rate of return, and also the payback method.